Hi, my name is Kristen Hennebold, and this is my persuasive speech. Think back to a time when you were driving, and you encountered an elderly person driving next to you, and you noticed that they ran a stop sign or they cut you off. Did you feel more concerned for them or for yourself? From my experience, I encountered an elderly woman on a road while driving, and I noticed when she cut me off that she looked confused. But I was both concerned for myself and her. Most kids do not take away the keys of their parents, even though they know they should not be driving. But who are we to tell them they can't drive? <clears throat> Part of getting older is vision loss and worsening. Next, the legs and arms start to respond slower. And lastly, elders have de more deadly crashes than teens. Most elderly people know they should not be driving, but they still do, because they don't want to give up part of their independence, and they don't want to face the facts. That's why uh, yearly driving tests should be mandatory for ages 75 and up. Did you know that some states do not make anyone take a driving or vision test? How safe does that really make you feel? In South Dakota, a vision test for ages 65 and up are required only if suggested by an optometrist. First, according to Paul G. Steinkuehler, an ND who, had, who graduated from George Washington University, the World Health Organization lists several categories of visual disability. Low vision is defined as visual accuracy between, between 2060 and 2200, or corresponding visual field loss to less than 20 degrees in the better eye with the best possible correction. Blindness is defined as visual accuracy of less than 2400 or corresponding visual test loss or visual field loss to less than 10 degrees in the better eye with the best possible correction. This means that if a person does not meet these requirements, they cannot and should not be driving legally. <laughs> in Paul Steinkiller's article, Legal Vision Requirements for Drivers in the United States are restrictions based on vision testing, which vary from state to state, and include mandated use of corrective lenses, limiting driving to sunset and su to sunrise only, prohibiting freeway driving, restricting the area in which driving is allowed, and requiring additional mirrors. This could be one of the solutions to help assist elders and their driving, which I mean, sometimes they just need a little extra help. By following the law, it will save a lot of unnecessary car accidents. Overall, Stein Keeler is giving us the basis to the vision requirements for driving. When vision starts to worsen, it can affect the way people drive, and this is most common in older adults. As my first main point has demonstrated, part of getting older is vision loss and worsening. Second. Elder legs and arms start to, start to not respond as quickly. When you get older, your reaction time starts to increase. According to Ted Lampier's article, in almost every case, the elderly driver told police that he or she confused the brake and the gas pedal. All of these drivers have passed written and vision exams. None fell asleep at the wheel, none had been drinking, and none had been taking strong medication. This is proving that besides slow reaction times, elderly adults get confused easily, which is why yearly driving tests should be put in place. According to Consumer Reports magazine, these are red flags for elderly drivers. Slow response times, inability to fully turn and check blind spots, run stop signs, motorists honking at them constantly, hesitation to drive, Cognitive dysfunction, such as getting lost and then having to call for help. Repeat fender benders or paint scrapes on their cars. These are all just a few of the things that can happen that start out as small problems, but continue to increase and become big problems that are serious and may become fatal. Through my two points of evidence, I have shown you that by having yearly tests for ages 75 and up, we can help those elders who are confused and just should not be driving. Elders' legs and arms start to respond slower. Third, elders have more deadly crashes than teens. 
According to a Carnegie U Mellon University study, the fatality rate for drivers 85 and over is four times higher than it is for teenagers, who are usually pegged as our most reckless drivers. Most people think that teens are more dangerous, a more dangerous possibility because they are new drivers and do not have a high mature level. But according to statistics, older drivers are more dangerous. According to Ted Lampier's article, elderly drivers willingly, few elderly drivers willingly hand over their keys. Their car is their ultimate treasured symbol of independence and freedom. The goal, they say, is not to take drivers off the road and give them one more reason to be depressed about being old. Rather, it's to keep them driving, but safely. This provides intellect on why elders should not be driving who are still driving. If yearly tests were put in action, then it would not, it is not about them being stubborn, it would just be the law. Through my research, I have found that teens have high crash rating, but elderly adults have more fatal car accidents. As I proved in my third point, elders have more deadly crashes than teens. Now that I have given you some information on the subject, allow me to summarize this information for you. Although teens are a big risk factor on the road, and they do tend to have a higher crash rating than elder adults, it does not mean they are more dangerous. The difference between teen accidents and elder accidents are that teens get in accidents from texting and driving, driving way too fast, goofing off in the car with friends, or just trying to change the radio station. While on the other hand, elders, they get confused on if there's a stop sign, if they stop completely, which, which is the brake and which is the pedal. They don't know. They can't see behind them to fully check their mirrors or their blind spots, so they just guess when they switch lanes. So I ask you, who would you rather have on the road with you and beside you? Someone who is really eager to be driving for one of the very first times and yeah, they may have an immature level. Or would you rather have someone who has no idea what's behind them because they can't turn and see? Or they can't decide which is the brake and which is the gas pedal? It's not about hurting feelings and trying to take independence away from someone. It's about trying to keep our roads safe for all ages. Yearly driving tests should be mandatory to people ages 75 and up. Thank you.